what you're looking at is a highly productive and biodiverse underwater ecosystem. It provides habitat and food for a wide variety of marine life. This is a kelp forest, but they don't have any roots. They are not even plants. These are giant algae. In this video, we would be learning about algae, one of the first plant-like organisms that evolved on Earth. Algae is a very simple organism. Um, it has chlorophyll. Uh, that's why it appears green or any other color. Uh, they are autotrophic. They can produce their own food and they are thalloid. Thalloid just means that they appear like a flattened structure, something like a leaf. And it's important to notice that uh, they do not have any complex cellular organization like organs in them. So, although they are green, they do not have any true roots, stems or leaves within them. Did you know how algae came about? It is believed that one of the earliest algae, which is the cyanobacteria or blue-green algae, was engulfed or um, phagocytosed by a eukaryotic cell and somehow the organelles combined and evolved to form the algae that we have right now. Algae are mostly aquatic. Uh, they are found both in freshwater as well as marine waters. They are found on land as well. So land features like rocks, soils and even wood are seen to have um, algal growth in them. Now what you're looking at is something called as a lichen. Lichen is an association between algae and fungus. So, not only does algae like uh, living on water and land, it also likes living on other organisms. And uh, the relationship between them is symbiotic or mutualistic, meaning both algae and the fungus are benefited due to this relationship. So, what exactly happens is that, so the green uh, balls that you see represent algae. Um, they are intertwined in the mycelium of the fungus, represented in blue. Um, the um, algae gets a place to live within the fungus and in return, the algae gives food to the fungus. But did you know this is not a unique relationship uh, just with the fungus? Because what other animals do you think support algae this way? You will be surprised to know that um, invertebrates like corals and vertebrates like salamander and sloth also can have such symbiotic relationships. Um, in salamander, uh, algae are found inside their developing eggs. Yes, inside the eggs. Um, and on sloth, they grow on the um, hairs or fur of the sloth. Um, in corals here, you can see that in these individual organisms, these green dots represent algae. We know that algae developed millions of years ago, right? So they've had the time to develop um, and evolve a lot of varieties within them. These varieties can be seen in various aspects of this organism. Um, to start with, color is something very obviously different in these organisms. So we basically see four types. We have red, blue, green, brown, and green. Um, blue green algae are considered as part of the green algae. And uh, mostly when we talk about algae categories, we have three the red, brown, and green. Next is the size of the algae. Um, algae could be unicellular. And uh, what you're looking at here is a species called uh, chlorella or they could be multicellular. So these multicellular algae grow so big that they actually look like a plant. So this is what you saw at the start of the video. This is a kelp and kelp is a marine brown algae. Next is the structure of algae. Um, so we already saw that they exist in unicellular forms, right? So we also have multicellular forms of algae. These are called as macroalgae, which is your kelp and uh, eulothrix, which look like small plants. So other than these two, algae have a unique way of existence in the form of a colony. This is usually seen in unicellular algae like uh, volvox. 
So, what you see here are individual volvox. See these small spheres? They grow together or exist as colonies. They also show varieties in their shapes. So, we have the spherical algae, which is the unicellular chlorella. We have a filamentous algae. This is a green alga called spirogyra. We have another green alga, which looks like a ribbon or like a leaf, which is ulva. And finally, we have branched algae. So, this is usually seen in brown algae, which appears like bigger plants. So, here, this is a fucus. Reproduction in algae can occur in two methods. So, we see asexual reproduction as well as sexual reproduction. Asexual reproduction can occur by vegetative method. So, something like fragmentation or they could also produce spores. So, these spores could be motile or non-motile depending upon the species of algae. Sexual reproduction involves fusion of male and female gametes. Now, let's look a little deeper into each of these methods of reproduction. Asexual reproduction method like fragmentation is seen in the filamentous uh, green alga spirogyra. So, this is how the filaments appear. Let's say we have a fragment of uh, spirogyra and it breaks into two. So, now you have two fragments, right? Each of these fragments can now grow into an individual spirogyra. The most common type of asexual spore is a zoospore. Uh, these are flagellated as well as motile, meaning they can move places. Um, so, what usually happens is that um, these spores get released from the parent body when the conditions are favorable and they can move to another place and then they germinate and one spore gives rise to one entire alga. And finally, we have sexual reproduction. The type of gametes uh, creates variety within sexual reproduction. The gametes could be either isogamous or anisogamous. Isogamous meaning they are uh, similar sized or they look similar. Anisogamous means they look different. So, uh, these isogamous gametes could be flagellated as in Eulothrix or as in Spirogyra, they might lack uh, flagella. So, it just means that one is motile and the other is non-motile. Um, in case of Eudorina, you see flagellated gametes but they are of different size. Um, now, within anisogamous uh, gametes, you have a very specific type called as uh, oogamous gametes or oogamy uh, sexual reproduction. So, here we have two unique looking uh, gametes. So, we have the female, which is usually larger, spherical and non-motile. And we have a male, which is smaller in size and motile. And usually, the male gamete travels to the female gamete for fertilization. Such kind of gametes are seen in volvox and fucus. We saw the huge variety of algae, right? Uh, but did you also know that they are very important for us to maintain the ecosystem on Earth? Um, at least half of the total carbon dioxide that is fixed on Earth is carried out by algal photosynthesis. So, it fixes these carbon dioxide and in the process, it produces a huge amount of oxygen in the sea as well as in the air, in the atmosphere. Um, next, algae is used as food as well in lots of cultures around the world. So, they are consumed as uh, seaweeds. So, species like Porphyra, Laminaria, Sargassum, um, almost 70 species of marine algae are uh, said to be edible. There are some industrial uses of algae as well. Substances like hydrocolloids can be obtained from algae. Um, hydrocolloids are these modified uh, carbohydrates that can retain a lot of water and swell up. Um, in the process, they start to look like gel or a jelly. So, we have a wide variety of them. Um, algin is one, carrageenan, agar. Algin is obtained from brown alga, whereas carrageenan and agar are obtained from red algae like gelidium and uh, gracilaria. This is a pudding where we use um, algin or carrageenan. Uh, these are used for food sources mostly. Um, and uh, this is a plate where we have grown uh, microbes. 
Um, so agar is used for this particular purpose. Um, did you also know that um, the unicellular algae, like chlorella, it is a rich source of protein and it is used as a food supplement. And um, because it's usually uh, dried up and the form of powder, it is used uh, as a food source or a supplement during space travel as well. And um, this is how they usually look like. 